The new Zen Quadro from Antelope Audio may tick a lot of boxes in terms of quality, features and even price, but it's got one thing that I don't think I've ever seen before. Hi folks, I'm Mike and I hope you will. There's a special reason why I'm using the Shure SM7B microphone for today's video. Now it's plugged into the new Zen Quadro audio interface from Antelope Audio. We'll talk about why I'm using this specific microphone a little bit later on, as well as talking about that special feature which I hinted at during the intro. Now I actually use an Antelope Audio interface in my studio every single day, and I have done for a few years now, which is probably why why they sent this unit to me to try out because I'm really familiar with the kind of software that they use to control their audio interfaces and I happen to think it's really very very powerful indeed we'll get into all of that later on but first of all let's take a look at this little black box the Zen Quadro is constructed using a combination of metal and high quality plastics and it just generally feels like something which is really well built. On the front we see our first two analog inputs in the form of XLR combos, meaning we can either use an XLR cable here or a quarter inch jack. Now these can be used for microphones with or without phantom power as line inputs or as high Z inputs which are useful for things like electric guitars. On the right hand side we see our two independent Dependent headphone outputs, meaning we can actually send separate mixes to each of these, which is really useful if you're an engineer working with an artist who wants a slightly different mix to you in their headphones. On the back of the unit, we see our second two analog inputs, again in the form of XLR combos, and to the right of this, we see our main balanced monitor outputs. To the right of this again, we've got another two line outputs. These could be useful for a second set of monitors or to go out to, say, some external hardware. To the right of this, we have two SPDIF connectors. This adds two digital ins and two digital outs. And then to the right of this, we've got two USB-C connectors. Now, the first of these is used to connect the unit to your computer, where it also gets its power. Yes, you don't need a separate power supply for for this unit, it's bus powered. The second of these USB-C connectors here is something we're gonna talk about a little bit later. Now on the side of the unit, we add another eight digital inputs via ADAT. This is super useful if you wanna expand the unit for much bigger productions. On the top, we see our large screen, which I mostly use to show the input and the output level, super useful for that. And then using a combination of the buttons and the large dial here, we can get to settings for gain, for output, and we can adjust different settings here. We can also access our control and system menus here as well. Now it's pretty useful in terms of accessing features from the hardware here but I personally prefer to use the software for that and we'll talk about that a little bit later on. So that's the hardware but what's going on under the hood? Well quite a lot actually. When we take into account all of the analog and digital connectors here we get a total of 14 ins and 10 outs on this unit and it's using the same converters as their flagship Galaxy models which cost like thousands of dollars with up to 130 decibels of dynamic range. We get four high quality discrete preamps which have an extremely low noise and offer up to 75 decibels of gain. That's going to be important later so remember that little number there. We can record at 24 bit with sample rates up to 192 kilohertz. Now Antelope use a technology which they call Synergy Core which allows you to use up to 48 real-time mono effects on six input chains simultaneously. Now, when we're talking about effects, we're talking about EQs, guitar amps and cabinets, classic compressors, etc. And they include 37 real-time plugins with this actual unit. So you remember that 75 decibels of gain I asked you to remember for the mic preamps? Well, it becomes really important when you're using microphones like this, the Shure SM7B, which is super popular. Now, the problem with microphones like this is they need a lot of gain from the preamps and an awful lot of audio interfaces simply don't quite provide enough to make a microphone like this usable by 
by itself. So the solution over the years has been something like this. This is the cloud lifter and it boosts the gain of this microphone to make it usable with your audio interface. Well, with this audio interface, you don't need this. 75 decibels of gain is more than enough for a microphone like this. So you can simply throw this, well, don't throw it, don't buy it in the first place. You'll save $149 by not using this. Remember that when we talk about the price of this unit a little later on. So one of the reasons I like to use my Antelope audio interface every day is the control software. It's a little bit different to other audio interfaces faces, but I find it really flexible and super useful in that way. Let's dive in and take a look. At first glance, the software for the Zen Quadro may look pretty similar to software you've seen for other audio interfaces. In particular, we've got this familiar mixer in the middle of the screen here. And for other audio interfaces, what would normally happen is the first channel on the mixer would represent preamp one on your interface. The second channel would represent preamp two, the third channel preamp three, etc., etc., working through all of the different kinds of inputs on your device with their preamps or ADAC connections, etc, etc. But on the Zen Quadro and other audio interfaces from Antelope Audio, it works a little bit different. In fact, it's a lot more flexible because what we can do is assign any input on our device to any channel on this mixer. Now, for example, we can see our four preamps at the top here, one, two, three, four. I can adjust what type of inputs they are and their gain, etc., on here. And then I can assign any of these four to any of these channels here. So what I'm gonna do is just go ahead and demonstrate this uh, for a kind of a real world example and go to channel one and just go up to the top here and assign preamp one to channel one. So you can see it's kind of working there and I could adjust the level through my monitors or for my headphones in here. Now that would show up as input one in my door. However, as I say, it could actually have any input on the device assigned to it. Now, the next thing I may want to do um, if I was using this audio interface is have a little bit of reverb in my headphones if I was recording a, a vocal, for example. We can do that from here by switching on uh, Aura Verb, which is built into the device, and we can do a send you know, from uh, channel one on our mixer, switch on the reverb, and we can actually hear that reverb in our headphones. However, it won't be recorded. We can use our favorite reverb in our door later on. But just uh, to help the performance of the singer, this can be really useful. And that's why I call it comfort reverb. It really does help them to feel comfortable. Now, once we've done that, we may actually want to assign some actual effects to this that will be recorded. So for example, if I go in here, I may want to uh, add a compressor. Okay, so I'm gonna go down to vintage compressors here and use FET A76. This is like an 1176 style compressor. And you can see that appear here. I can adjust the settings as I want to for my performance. The other thing I might wanna do is add in, well, say another compressor. Let's go for an LA2A style style one with Opto 2A. And again, I could just go ahead and dial in my settings, whatever I want them to be for those compressors. And as you can see, there's all different kinds of effects that we can actually add in here. I won't go through all of them now. Okay, that's great because we can compress the signal on the way in just in the same way as we would perhaps do with hardware if we wanted to. So I've got that set up. But what if I'm not totally sure that I like the sound of my vocal here um, with those compressors applied to it? I don't want to risk sort of ruining my recording, having to do it again. So what I can also do is record a clean version without these compressors. And that's super easy to do because I just go to channel two here and I assign preamp one again to channel two. Yeah, so both channel one and channel two have preamp one assigned to them. I can assign them as inputs one and two in my door, record both of them. But one of them has those effects applied, those compressors, and the other one doesn't. 
super, super helpful and useful. OK, let's do another example. Let's say we want to record an electric guitar. So um, with my preamp two up here, I might change it. Well, it's already on high Z, which is suitable for an electric guitar. If I had an electric guitar plugged in, I would go ahead and set the level for that. And then I could assign that to, say, channel three here. So I'll go and assign preamp two to channel three. OK, and a similar thing, I may want to do some amp sims. So I'll just add an effect in here. Let's go for a guitar amp. Doesn't matter what it is. There's a Vox style one here. I'll also need a cabinet because guitar amps by themselves sound horrible. So I'll go to the guitar cabinets here and I'll just add a guitar cabinet and I can adjust my settings for my guitar in there. Super cool. It's really much easier to record an electric guitar when you can get a sense of what you're you know, going to hear and to play into an amp is a very different experience than just recording a dry recording. Oh, right, a dry guitar. However, just as, just as before, if I wanted to make sure I do record the dry guitar so I can make adjustments or apply another amp sim in my software later, I can go to channel four here, select preamp two, yeah, and also record the guitar dry without the amp and cabinet sim applied to it. That just gives you a little glimpse of how flexible this whole system is. It's pretty easy to use once you get your head around the basics of it. And basically you can just patch anything into anywhere. I really do like it. I can't sort of get used to other workflows on other interfaces now because I've been using this kind of system for about two or three years now and it's just super helpful. Okay so I think I've kept you in suspense long enough about a really unique feature on this audio interface. Do you recall earlier on we noted that there are two USB-C ports on the back. Now that in itself is not too unusual. Sometimes you see this on other audio interfaces so that you can supply extra bus power to the unit. They sometimes need that. However, in this case, it has another purpose because we can actually connect this audio interface to two devices at once in use as an audio interface on each device. So for example, you could use one connector to connect up to your computer where your door normally is, and you could use the other connector to connect to your phone for streaming. So you could have high quality sound coming from your door, and then you could blend in with that a live performance, either via a microphone or a guitar, which is plugged in, etc and then stream all of that to something like TikTok. I haven't seen this feature on any other device, I don't think. Let me know what you think in the comments down below. So let's talk about price. I'm not gonna describe this as a cheap audio interface. It hasn't got the feature set or the quality of components of a cheap audio interface. So don't go comparing it to like a, a Scarlett 2i2 or something like that. The closest audio interface I can think of, which we could sort of compare this to, would be the Universal Audio Apollo Twin X. And that currently sells for around about 999, let's say a thousand US dollars. Now this is selling for 599 euros, roughly 600 US dollars much, much cheaper than its competition. And if you take into account, you no longer need one of these. If you're using one of these, then it's an even better value proposition. I think you definitely have to take this into account if you want a quality audio interface for your studio. If you do want to buy it, you can follow the link in the description down below and get it directly from Antelope Audio. Okay, so let's get down to it. When Antelope Audio contacted me to ask me to look at this YouTube Unit. The only condition I set was that they cannot control what I say about it. It's my video, it's my channel, it's my opinion. Now, that probably implies that I should say something positive and then something negative. But for me, actually, it implies I should just be honest about my experience. And honestly, I just can't find a whole load of negative things to say about this. I'd be lying if I came up with them. Now, maybe it doesn't have some features that you would like to see, like say some MIDI ports, or maybe you don't like the color. Maybe you prefer to see a, a white one or something. But for me, it's got a great feature set and it's got sort of high quality components, etc., which is really important to me. And it delivers on all of that. So that's why I may come off as just being super positive 
positive about it because I am super positive about it. Now, I have used this with both Mac and PC over the last week or so. And I've got to say, in terms of installation and using the unit with both of those operating systems, it was flawless. This is an area where I think Antelope Audio have really improved, especially with this particular unit. It really went super, super well. You know, no problems whatsoever. Let me know how you feel about this unit in the comments down below. And thank you so much for watching this video. I'm Mike and I'll see you in the next video.